Welcome to the Bible Momming Podcast, where we are parenting by the book. I am your host, Paula Whitten. This podcast is for women who struggle with regular mom stuff, but also long to have their kids grow closer to Christ. It's a lifetime journey, and we're in it together. As a real mom, you just never know where I'll be podcasting from, but I'll always be available for you. Now let's get started. Hello, mamas, and welcome to the Bible Momming Podcast. This is episode 10, and I'm your host, Paula Whitten. I'm an author, pastor, wife, and mom, and I've taught kids and teens how to understand the Bible for 30 years. Now, I'm here to help you raise your kids with a biblical foundation. On today's show, I'm continuing my conversation with singer-songwriter Mandy Pinto about what it was like to discover that her daughter had brain cancer. But before we begin, I want to give you an opportunity to share with me your stories about when you experienced suffering in your family. You could tell me your frustrations as well as any feelings of success or joy you happen to have in that moment. Having experienced my own sense of suffering, I know that there are different experiences and different feelings for each time, and I want to hear all your perspectives. You could contact me at BibleMomming.com slash contact or Paula at BibleMomming.com. Also, if you have questions, I would love it if you would share your questions with me on the topic of suffering, prayer, the Bible, or whatever you want. During the first week of the month, I have an online Bible momming chat where we discuss things that matter to you, and I'll be answering, to the best of my ability, those questions. You can get all the details about the chats by joining the Bible momming Facebook group or joining my newsletter at BibleMomming.com. All you do is go to BibleMomming.com and scroll down to the homepage to the bottom. Fill out the little form in our newsletter. I regularly send out information in my newsletter to let those folks know what's going on in the Bible momming community so you will keep up to date. Now on today's episode, Mandy Pinto and I had a great conversation last week about her music. We just started talking about her daughter and what it was like to learn that she had brain cancer. But because Mandy is so open and honest, we continued talking and it's become another episode. So here it is. If you missed the first part of our conversation, you will want to go back and listen to episode nine. Mandy is a prolific artist with eight independent solo albums. She's performed and led worship across the United States, everywhere from the Georgia Dome to backcountry small churches. In our previous conversation, she shared that she was creating her latest album, Hold My Everything, when she and her husband, Jeremy, learned that their oldest daughter, Bridget, had brain cancer. Today, as we continue talking... She shares what it was like for her to learn this news and to help her daughter face it with confidence and even a sense of peace. She shares how she keeps hopeful and how she helped her two daughters to work through not even getting to see each other because of chemotherapy and safety concerns. Yeah, real mama stuff happens in the midst of yucky mama stuff too. And I want to encourage you to listen to this episode and check out Mandy's music. She's an amazing lady. What is it like for you when you're told your daughter has cancer, what, what happens? Honestly, when I was first told, because the first thing we were told is that she had a brain tumor. So that was, I was driving home from the MRI. I just remember that moment in my mind saying, okay, okay. All right. Let's take one step at a time. That, that's what I was thinking. When I was told she had cancer, um, I really just thought, you know what, Mandy, let's just find out the information from the doctor. I think it's very easy for us to like Google stuff yeah. and get real crazy. And again, that's that control factor. Like I have to have all the answers going into this. I need to know every side effect. I need to know everything. And you know, the doctors, they go over that with you. Right. Um, and they go over the percentages. And so I just, my husband and I just thought, you know, we need to just really hear the doctors out. And we kept saying one step at a time because you know, Jesus encouraged us, you know, to just really take one day at a time because that's what's given to us today and not to think too far ahead. So those were the thoughts that went through my mind was to not think too far ahead. And also to, if you start researching, you're going to see all different testimonies and stories of children with cancer. Yeah. Um, I, I would encourage people to not do that. Um, because it gets I mean, frustrating and depressing, right? I mean, that would be yeah. It's it's yeah. Going and letting yourself sit in worst case scenario land. Yeah, exactly, Paula. And with that, and and not that you can't like hear wonderful stories and, and testimonies. I think that that's great. You know, God's healing, 
and talk to friends that have walked through it that are like, you know, it's not that I'm trying to deny what could be a reality. It's just what we learned was that Bridget's story was not everybody else's story. Right. What would happen to Bridget did not. So we, we listened carefully and were, you know, and received everything they told us. However, that wasn't the case with Bridget. She didn't have the side effects and the things that other children had had. So our whole goal was to let's just let Bridget's story be her own story. That way we don't get discouraged or or become afraid of something that may never even happen. Yeah, it's fair. Well, and and even if you're going into worst case scenario to, uh, if you're always looking at the dark side of the tunnel, there's, there's no hope there. Mm -hmm. You're giving yourself no opportunity for joy. If you're always looking in the dark side of the tunnel. Right. And I, I'm not saying like we didn't have harsh realities. We did, but you know, I mean, the Bible is very clear, you know, think on these things, things Mm -hmm. that are lovely, things that are pure, things that are good. And so we wanted to fill our mind with hope and with joy and with good things. You know, it's not that we were turning our back to, well, we were turning our back to negative thoughts that really um, take captive every thought, meaning to put something in jail. Like, because you have a choice of lock it up. Right. So, you know, when I hear you say this, I can't help but picture myself thinking of um, an athlete. You know, when an athlete trains and, and does all the regular daily work of lifting and building the muscles. And that way, when they're challenged, when they have to do something hard, they have the skills at hand to do it. Uh, mm-hmm. And as you're, as you're, freely able to quote scripture to me that tells me that you've been digging into the word for a long time you've been you've been getting those words into your heart you've been memorizing them so that when you needed them when you needed God's guidance and that help from scripture it was there yes ma'am his truth sustains us and you know I I would love to tell you that I had all this stuff memorized for years and years and years. And, you know, yes, it has accumulated over time. But it wasn't, again, it's that time of preparation that I spoke about earlier yeah. um, in, in another episode that, um, that yeah, like you're saying, it did prepare us for, for these things because, like Jesus promises, you know, we will have trials. I mean, in James. It speaks, you know, consider it joy when you undergo trials because it develops perseverance and character. And I don't know about you, but I want character. I do too. You know, and I want to be somebody who can yeah. persevere. I respect people who persevere. Right. I want to be like that. Right. Me too. And so I just, again, pointing people to Jesus is just always been a calling on my heart. I mean, we all should as believers point to Christ. But being called into ministry at a young age, I I felt like, gosh, you know, God, I I want to make sure it's not that I do it perfectly because mm-hmm. we're sinners, yeah. But I want to do this right and justly. I want to do Your name justice, and I want to represent You. And that doesn't mean that I did it perfectly, but I wanted to be intentional. Hmm. That's. Now, now you have, Bridget is your oldest daughter, correct? Uh-huh. How, how do you communicate with her and with her sister, who's only five? How do you, how do you communicate uh, the hope? How do you communicate with them what's going on? Because, yes, a nine-year-old can grasp things, and certainly as it's happening, she can grasp more and more, but... How do you help them understand not only what's going on, but how to lean on Christ in the middle of it? That's a great question. Um, you know, with Bridget, because, you know, there's only so much. She was eight at the time. So, you know, there's only so much that you can share. They don't understand big words like, you know, cancer and all that's involved. And I just, we just remember sitting down with her and telling her, you know, there's something in your brain 
And because she was having a bunch of symptoms as a result of this tumor, it was causing a lot of hardship in school. Her vision was affected. That was Mm. one of the first symptoms. And so what we chose to tell her was, you know what, as we kind of kill this tumor with medicine, we are, everything is going to get better. So you're going to see better. You're going to feel better. You're going to have more energy. Because it was on the pituitary, it affected her thyroid and hydrocortisone levels. And in practical terms, what does that mean as far as, how how was that for her? What does that mean? She was lethargic. Mm. Um, constantly tired, taking naps after school, after full days of school. And she's like, what's going on with her kid? You know, she's just, I know third grade, but come on. Like, you know, this isn't like her. Uh, I mean, she's always kind of been a little bit on the tired side. Uh, you know, needing more rest than others. That's what we would tell her. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, with that said, we would encourage her, hey, this medicine is going to help you get better. But we also told her, that it's going to be hard. There are going to be hard days. There's going to be days when you don't feel well. There's going to be, you won't be able to go to school for seven months. Mm. You won't be able to see your friends. It was during flu season, so there's no way she was allowed to go to school or okay. be in public, study, be at church or anything. Okay. But we told her, her third grade teacher volunteered to be her home study teacher. So after teaching a full day, she would come over and teach Bridget. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. She's amazing. She's amazing. And so we, Bridget was thrilled with that because she got one-on-one time with her teacher. So we didn't try and sugarcoat things. We did tell her there's going to be challenges. There are going to be hard things. And we will walk through that. And we want you to communicate to us when it stinks, because we'll sit there with you and say, this does stink. You know, not not push your feelings away, but acknowledge them. But we are always going to point to Jesus, like especially as she was dealing with. Jesus. I'm sorry, as she, I was just thinking about especially as she was dealing with um, the radiation and the re- repercussions of that, and loss of hair, and mm-hmm. yeah, right. And we told her, "Hey, you're going to lose your hair, but guess what? It's going to grow back, and it might even be curly." And and she was like, "Okay," like I mean, she, <laughs> part of it is her. Like she was just, I mean, she walked in there and, you know, she had a port, which allows them to have easy access to take blood and give her her treatment. And the nurses would be like, okay, you know, they're so amazing, these nurses. And, you know, what can we do to make this easy for you? She's like, just go in, go straight in. Mm. Do you want to sit down? No. She'd flush her own port. She, she just, they would tell her things like, okay, you're going to have a reaction. Most children, almost every child I know has a reaction to this chemo. So I'm going to stand right here for 15 minutes and administer medication. If you need that, if you start showing signs of an allergic reaction. And I remember sitting in that moment, Paul, this is a really cool thing. And the Holy Spirit told me she will not react. Now as a mom, I'm going, I'm not sharing this news. No, you know what does she react? You know, yeah. and, and so I'm like, how can I relate this to Bridget? She's very nervous about it. So I went up to her and I'm like, Bridget, let's just pray right now that you do not react. And she's like, okay. And so we prayed. We read scripture. Um, we very much made God a huge part, like the only part of this journey. So she would know that if healing came, it came from Him and not from some other source. Mm. Of course, God uses hospitals and nurses and doctors and treatment. So she didn't react. The nurse told us it was the first time in her whole nursing career she'd ever seen a child not react to this medication. And Mm -hmm. all throughout her rounds, they told her and gave her the forewarning every time. And Bridget and I would wink at each other across the room. Okay. We didn't want to be disrespectful, Mm -hmm. but we knew that God had already made this promise to us that she would not have any reaction Bridget also, and I want to, so Paul, I want to be sensitive because I know there are some mamas listening and they're walking through this right now. Yeah. And this is not the situation for them. Right. Maybe their, their, child, ch- their child is vomiting. Their child is, but I don't know what the reaction yeah. looks like. Right. And it's different. That's what I'm saying. Every story is different. Mm-hmm. But Bridget, Bridget did not get ill. Bridget did not get overly tired. She, she was, you know, she did have fevers. So of course she needs to be hospitalized when that happens. Right. But she, she, it was almost like 
the Lord had put the shield around her. And, you know, I talked to my husband a lot about this because when your child has walked through this and you see other children, because we saw, we walk alongside many other kids that are going through this right now. Right. Cause you're sitting there with the other families as they're doing stuff, right? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. We pray over them. We go visit them. We do what we can to help them financially. We, we spread the message of hope, message of Jesus to, with them and to them. But they, but, but I asked my husband, I'm like, gosh, really God is the only authority in how kids make it through this. Like he's the one that allows things and doesn't allow things. And, and, and it's very difficult because I see other children enduring so much, so many different things and symptoms as Bridget. And in my mind, I try to write my mind, oh God, why? You know, why do they have to have such a hard time with this radiation and are so ill? Oh, why is but a tough yet, question, isn't it? That's, yeah. It is. And then at the end of the day, the answer is always he is sovereign. Yeah. He is sovereign. It's, it's all, it's like, I don't, I shouldn't have to know the answer. It's in our human nature to ask it. Right. But it's actually when we just say, I'm sovereign, I'm sorry, you are sovereign and I am not, then I don't need to know the answer because his sovereignty is enough. And that's the, that's the giving up of control that you mentioned before. It's the, it's the idea of, I don't get to decide. I mean, as parents, we didn't get to decide what our kid would be like. We didn't get to decide uh, uh, how tall they'd be, how, what their personality would be. There's so many things we have no control over. And uh, this is just another area to say, okay, I didn't set this all in motion. I don't know what's going to happen. I trust that you do. Yes. And that's it. And not that there aren't those moments where you're crying in the shower, the ugly mm-hmm. cry, mm-hmm. and from the gut. Which is normal. Gut, which is, make, It makes sense. It's hard. Yes. yes. Jesus cried. It's okay. You know, <laughs> it's not like I was just sitting here every single day feeling at perfect peace at all times. Oh, my goodness. People get that idea that it's something out of a movie or whatever where somebody's going, oh, no. they just walk forward and they don't, they don't no. feel the pain or whatever. But, yeah. No. But it, faith is a choice. God gives us a choice to trust him or not. And it is easier to trust him with these difficult things, even the easy difficult things, if you know what I mean, easier difficult things. Mm-hmm. Well, like right now my to, daughter who's driving, I'm like, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, Paula. That is crazy. So yeah, yeah you know, no, it's, exactly. it's, it's important. I have to, you know, what am I going to do? I can't, I can't just go be, con- well, I could be a control freak mom. I'm quite capable, but uh, <laughs> it's not going to benefit her. No. So it doesn't help anybody. Yeah. Actually. It doesn't help <laughs> not me. Doesn't help nothing. Her. Yeah. Did, did how did Brielle do with this? Because I mean she's so little. Brielle, this all with her sister. <laughs> yeah. Brielle was, you know, we are so fortunately blessed with family nearby, and uh, she has the most amazing godmother who's my best friend that really spoils her. <laughs> like crazy. And I think it's important to you. I'm sure at some point you'll talk about, you know, the different love languages of your child. Um, Brielle, uh, Bridget's is quality time. It's all mm. about quality time. Brielle's huh. is about gifts. The girl loves gifts. I mean, it just <laughs> does not take much. And so, you know, knowing that about Brielle and, you know, of course, always checking in, Hey, you know, how are we doing? How, how's, you feel like you're spending time with mommy and daddy. And one of the hardest things was people were so generous and loving in this time that they not only blessed Bridget, but they would bless Brielle also. And, mm-hmm. um, the people thought of that. And yeah, like if Bridget got a coloring book and color supplies, then Brielle got, you know, some cool LOL toy or something she could unwrap or Legos or Hatchimals or whatever. But every once in a while there would be, just some sweet person wanting to send Bridget something and um, Brielle, you know, would come to the door and Bridget would open the box and Brielle, there was some jealousy there. Yeah. And on the flip side, Bridget was jealous of Brielle because Brielle was getting to go everywhere. Right. She got to go to the Christmas tree lighting at church. She got to do, do things 
and Bridget was just home. And, and so comparison of sisters. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so one day I had just kind of had enough of the back and forth that I sat them both down calmly, which is not always the case for me, <laughs> but I sat them for any down. Of us. <laughs> yes. I said, girls, I need you to understand there are going to be things that you get to go to and do that Bridget cannot do. And Bridget, there are going to be gifts that you receive that Brielle does not. And I said, and right now in this period of time, we need to stick together as a family and realize that this is the season we're in right now. It will not always be this way. But I want to see encouragement toward one another and the days of comparison. You know, and I said this in a, you know, very easy way that a five-year-old can understand. You need to stop thinking about what Sissy is getting. You don't understand what she's walking through because Brielle wasn't even allowed to go. She was allowed to go to the cafeteria at Children's, and that's about it. So. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, there's limited uh, places that she can go for safety of the other kids, right? Exactly. And being flu season, the siblings are not allowed to, even the siblings aren't allowed to go visit their oh, that's siblings so upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. So they would FaceTime all the time and, you know, from the room. So Brielle, you know, we tried to tell Brielle that a lot, the reason why Sissy's getting these is because she really can't go anywhere. And she started to understand that. And then we told, you know, Bridget, you know, Sissy is kind of going as your representative. <laughs> when people see her, they think of you. I'm going to pray for you. And she, you know, and it just, it just, it totally clicked. And from that day forward, there was no more, you know, ever in life. But, you right, know, there right, was yeah, no more this comparison. Just going to. I'm, I'm sure you, uh, you know, now that uh, Bridget is home and her hair is growing back, right? Yeah, she has a cute little pixie haircut. It's adorable. Yeah. Well, and, and so as they're back, I'm sure it's kind of one of those, and life goes on, because I bet you they still have the sister bicker, and they still have the... Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> kids are kids. <laughs> yes, you know. <laughs> so through this time, and you're, I mean, this is an ongoing thing, right? She has to get tested, what, annually, six months? How often does she have to get tested? For the first couple of years, it's every three months. And then after that, it's every six months. And then I think after five years, it's every year um, up until she's 18. And then I think it's like every couple of years. So, yeah, this is an that. ongoing. It's, it's cancer. Cancer is kind of quirky that way. It can come back. It can do its own thing. Mm-hmm. Just when you think you're done, it doesn't necessarily always mean that that's the end case, but it can, and it's hard to know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. What, what is something, if you, you know, if you're talking to other families dealing with cancer, what's something you would love to be able to tell them? Hmm. Well, one, that God is with you and he is for you. He doesn't want you to be afraid or discouraged, as it tells us in Joshua, because he is with you wherever you go. Uh, something else I would tell them and encourage them to do is a lot of parents that I talk to, they have this um, constant fear, like uh, just this constant, it never goes away. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't know what to expect. It's just this, this cloud. Right. And yes. so my encouragement to them, especially if they are believers, is to choose faith over fear. So every time they're feeling fearful that they, they literally speak out truth, which is, you know, you can say things, you know, God, you tell me not to be afraid or to be discouraged because you are with me wherever I go, um, to actually speak things out. And it will be, it's almost like, <laughs> it's like you know, you take a little pill and it like, ah, it subsides, <laughs> or, you know, maybe even a day or, or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> But you know, one of the things, I, I, the idea of trusting and, and putting your faith that way, one of the things that I, I appreciate is, um, <laughs> that's a cute image, the idea of, it's a pill. Um, it, it is. But, the, you know, one thing I also value is uh, even if your faith isn't there, like you're sitting there going, well, I don't have that faith. I don't feel that, you know. I always love the uh, the prayer of the Father and uh, talking to, to Jesus saying, uh, the, who's I think it was son who was uh, um, suffering, and it was, help me in my disbelief. 
Yes, help me overcome my unbelief, right? Help me with my unbelief. Exactly. I love that verse too. Yeah, because it's not just, we, we can claim our faith if you already have that faith. You're already standing in a strong place. But if we're not sure, that can be the prayer. Lord, help me have faith. Give me the faith that's going to yes. help me not lean on fear. Yes. Yeah. And that's, and it's kind of interesting how God works because he calms us at times where it's like, I shouldn't be calm. Why am I calm? I'm calm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. A hundred percent. And mm-hmm. I, I think that's, that's a beautiful prayer, Paula, for people to remember is Lord, help me increase my faith. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, and we have to remember too, you know, that the Jesus said that if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, that you could tell mountains where to go. Yeah. Move from here to there. Yeah. And I, I think I mean, my husband and I have this conversation about this, but sometimes, you know, do we limit ourselves from, and, and, you know, I'm not saying that God can't unleash his power at any moment because he's God and he's good. Even if we ask for it or don't ask for it, he has, he has the say and he has his way you know, in all things. But if we actually, what if we really had that faith and it was tiny that we said, you know, God, I believe that you can heal my daughter from cancer. And I believe that, you know, that you can and that you will, whether it's on this side of heaven or not. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's, you know, because I'm very careful with this because, you know, I, I don't believe that we just speak things into existence. I believe in the power of the name of Jesus. So right. all I know is what Jesus has said. Your faith has healed you, daughter. Mm-hmm. That's what he said to the woman who received healing for, you know, a bleeding disorder that she had for years. No one could cure her. Well, and, and, on he the, said it, it, yeah. and to add to that, if I can, uh, the idea that uh, for some families, their story ends in what we would refer to as a tragedy. And, um, and that doesn't mean that God's done, um, that he is capable of making good out of what seems like a hideous and horrible thing. Uh, as somebody yeah. who has, I, I have myself been in the hospital, not for cancer. I, I was hit head on by a car. And, um, I remember being the kid who had actually just learned that God can work all things together for good. And I remember sitting there going, okay, Lord, as I'm in the hospital, leg in a cast, arm up on a, on a pole, how are you going to make good out of this? Show me this. And, uh, what I have learned over the years is that he has, in fact, there have been many, many ways where he has made that into a good thing that happened in my life, but it doesn't feel like it in the moment. And so helping right. faith trust and have you know god is bigger than the moment oh i like that that's good stuff he is bigger than the moment i i know and i you know we have walked with families that have not had the same outcome yeah and they had faith and they believed and they trusted Mm -hmm. and the outcome was different yeah and we have Friends that have believed and, and, and whatnot, and they they have a totally different outcome. Like, like the God is the same. Uh, yeah. So he's got something. And I think he does. And, you know, even like, you know, anyone that's, you know, struggled with cancer either themselves or with their spouse or child or family member, they know that when those exams come around, you know, every three months or the checkup, you're thinking, oh, dear Lord, please let there be nothing there. Um, please God, you know, just continue to let your healing reign in this person's life or my life. And just as Jesus prayed, knowing that he would endure the cross, not as I will, but as you will. And, um, and again, that sovereignty piece and the purpose piece that you were just speaking of is, is in the moment and it's it's difficult. It's not easy, but I'll tell you what, it is much easier to invite God into the picture than to leave him out. Oh yeah. And trying to carry it all on your own. It's you know, it's a God sized oh. burden stuck on human shoulders. So Yeah, I'd probably I don't know. If I if I had to carry that alone, 
I'd probably like be in a mental hospital. I, I, I probably yeah. like have a breakdown. Yeah. Um, cause we were never meant to carry these things on our own. And like you said, the community, you know, if people are not connected to other women, um, and other, you know, people, other believers that can encourage them in this time, like even like support group, there's so many different support groups. We have a wonderful foundation out here where I live. Um, called the Michael Hoffman Foundation. Mm. Beautiful, wonderful people walk beside us, caring for us. I'll make sure I put that in the show notes. And uh, if you can give me, if you can send me any kind of links for helping families who are dealing with this, I would, I will put that in my show notes. Absolutely. You know, now out of curiosity, this is something I ask anybody I interview. What is your favorite verse right now? My favorite Bible verse right now and has been for a while is John sixteen thirty three, where Jesus is warning the disciples of troubles to come. And they're finally saying to Jesus, you're finally not speaking in riddles. We can finally understand you, which is amazing because Jesus had been trying to tell them things all this time. But they didn't get and it. And he yeah. says, they didn't get it. But finally, their eyes were open. They said, we get what you're saying. And he says... In this life, you will have troubles. You will have troubles, but to take heart, for I have overcome the world. Hmm. That's yeah. He's that's overcome. Awesome, that's an awesome verse. Awesome verse. So, how can how can people get a hold of? I want to make sure that people can hear your uh, your album. Hold my everything. I love. Uh, my favorite song that I was listening to was on Christ alone. I stand. Yeah. And thank just, you. Your sweet vocals. Oh, gorgeous. Thank you. No, they can, um, I'm available. They can go check it out and hear a couple of snippets on iTunes, of course, or anything. Spotify. It's available pretty much everywhere that you would buy. Or you download listen to Mandy music. Pinto, right? Yeah. M A N D I E P I N T O. Awesome. Like the bean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they could. I have a website, you know. I know a lot of people just go straight to iTunes or SoundCloud or whatever to Spotify to listen. Um, of course, I, I'm on Instagram, just Mandy Pinto or Twitter and all that. All I, over the place. You know, I'll make sure that I have links so that people can check you out because awesome. just love, love, love all that you put out. As we wrap up, I want to make sure that we get to be involved in helping and supporting you as part of the community. How can we pray for you and your family? Oh, man. Well, prayers for wisdom, obedience, for continued healing for Bridget, and just an openness, a willingness to share the gospel wherever we are, whether it's through this story or some other story, we would greatly appreciate your prayers. Absolutely. Darlin, it's, it's a pleasure to have had you on the show. And I actually would love to have you come back another time and uh, just talk about other stuff. Cause I, I love hearing your, where you're at and the, the challenges you have, but also the joys you have, you are infectious. And I love Aww. having you. God. <laughs> well, mamas, that wraps up my time with Mandy Pinto. And I'm so glad she was able to come and do this and even do two shows. She is just such a sweet lady. So I will be having in the show notes information about the Michael Hofflin Foundation that she mentioned, as well as how to hear her music, mandypinto.com. And I just want to encourage you that uh, one of the reasons we build this online community is to give moms a chance to connect with one another and to encourage one another. And if you know another mom who is struggling with this issue with cancer or some other disease that is affecting their family, please share this podcast with them to hopefully encourage them. And uh, I want to welcome you to give a review as a way of putting it out there on the internet People don't know what the value of something is if somebody else hasn't reviewed it. So please help us out and get the word out. But I also want to encourage you to take the time and get to know your local community. Spend time looking for a good church, a church that believes in Jesus Christ, that is reading the Bible, that trusts is God as the one true and holy God. They have all this stuff on their internet pages so you can see that easily about what they believe. 
and go and check them out. Go check out the small groups that they have. Be able to invite people into your homes. I know it's scary. I know it's hard. I know it feels like you're too busy. You can't possibly fit it in. But as Mandy shared, these kinds of things become a blessing when our problems hit because we have people in our lives. If we shut people off and we keep in our own little neck of the woods, then we are dealing with problems all by ourselves. We can share with each other our joys as well as our sorrows when we're in community. So I encourage you, ladies, find a community, take the chance, reach out to them, spend time with them. It is time well invested. I've enjoyed this time we have together. I know you have plenty of things to do and many options. So thank you for listening. Remember, love is patient, love is kind, and that is never more real than in our families. God bless you and have a great week. 